Hi guys, uh, thank you for, for joining us. Um, as he says, my name's Peter White, for, I'm the TV editor of Deadline. Uh, this is gonna be a really fun panel, so uh, looking forward to uh, this. Um, welcome to Flatch. Uh, very funny show based on a very funny British comedy called This Country. Um, it follows a documentary crew that is exploring the lives of these small town. Uh, you've got Kelly and Shrub Mallet, who we've got the, the actors who play that uh, joining us today. Um, before I bring them out, we're gonna watch a clip. There's not a lot to do in Flatch, so we make videos. Hands down, our best one is when we bear mace shrub in the face. <laughs> oh, God! Does it hurt? Oh, it burns! Ow, 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 ow. Well, the church moved me here from Minneapolis. <laughs> Bit of a change. I moved here with Joe when he got the job. Then he dumped me. He can't compete with God and apparently Tinder. <laughs> I don't want you getting the wrong impression of Flatch. We got two restaurants, one with a menu. Show's actually not just my cousin, he's also my best friend. What can I say? I like an underdog. You, all, we all should. We're gonna do our first date on Zoom. The town doesn't get very good internet, so I'm missing every other word. Can I say it? Last time, while I'm all. <laughs> <laughs> totally. You just Okay, hey, you need to make the font and the paper bigger. I lost a pair of my reading glasses. Hi, Mandy, what's up? I just told you. Oh. There is definitely a lot of colorful characters here in Flash, but it's part of its charm. Back up! Back up! Back up! That day, your guys are We're shooting. King! We're filming here. Gloria! I'm not crazy. And uh, we have some of those colorful characters here with us. <laughs> I'm going to introduce one by one. We have director and executive producer Paul Fleek. We have. Jenny Bix, who's showrunner and executive producer. We have Holmes, who plays Kelly Mallet. We have Sam Straley, who plays Shrub Mallet. And we have Michael Thorne, the president of Fox Entertainment. Yes. That's not a bad start, right? I like it. Thank you, everybody, for that energy. Oh, my God. Yes. That woke us up. I love this crowd. <laughs> um, I'm not crazy. You guys like that song? <laughs> <laughs> Sing it. <laughs> let's, um, let's start with you, Jenny and Paul. Um, tell us how this came about. Tell us you know, where the idea came from to adapt this show. You know, talk us through that origin story. Yeah, uh, Lionsgate uh, ha works with uh, BBC, and they, sent, they had this uh, property called This Country, which is a, 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 um, a docu-comedy out of Britain that's hilarious. And so I watched it, my, my company watched it. We were just like, this is the funniest show ever. We want to do it. But then it's like, but who can we get to run it? Oh, I know. We, know, we love Jenny Biggs. Oh, and I love Paul Feig. So it all worked out well. Um, and then we, almost three years ago now, went up to the Cotswolds and met with Daisy and Charlie in a pub in the basement. Who are the original pub. creators of the show, right? Yes, yes. And, um, we, and, and we started working and we started developing it and putting it together. And then these two came along, which was a, a gift. Had, had you and Paul worked together before? No. We're just friends, no. We, we've been socially friends, but uh, fans of each other. Best it, friends. It, yeah, yeah, best friends. Ex-lovers. Yeah. Yes. Oh, <laughs> oh no, no, Sam. No. So awkward. <laughs> There's your story. Sam, you're bringing the tone down already, man. <laughs> but the big challenge was that the, the, this country, it's uh, Charlie and Daisy Cooper, their brother and sister in real life, and they actually shoot the, the show in the town they live in, and like their actual father and family members are in the show. So it's a very personal show to them. So it's like, well, we can do the show and make it funny, but who are we going to cast that has that same kind of, kind of you know, chemistry? And it was it was my uh, creative executive of my company saw saw Holmes on Twitter doing funny videos that were just her in her car doing these characters and he's like I think I found her and we saw hundreds of other people and it was her she was the only person that was right for it and then Sam came to us and uh... Holmes had you been aware that we, were you sort of auditioning or was this just online clips talk us through what you were doing to get their attention so 
I would just do improv for free. In fact, I would pay sometimes to do it um, in Chicago. And I did that for like every night for like four years. And finally, one of my ex-boyfriends loved them to death when it can transfer to friends, you know? And he um, basically let, uh, was like, you should just start posting on Twitter. I see people do what you do every night, like online. And so then I would just kind of like once a week post like a silly video of a scenario. And then the one he actually, uh, that got me the part, my dream job, um, I just, uh, Actually, basically my boyfriend, it was a made up story where he found a ruby in my belly button and we were fighting over who owns the ruby. And that was really it. And basically, I guess I was goofy enough that then they let me audition in Chicago. And then, and I remember thinking this is like your chance because they sent an email being like, we'd love her to watch a clip. And I was like, if you fuck this up, I won't forgive you. Um, and then I got to go out to New York and that's when I met Sam and it was just like the best chemistry test ever. And yeah, it's really, really a dream. They really changed my life. I thought I'd still be like a barista, you know, doing improv, Did you which oddly, I love improv. We still don't pay her, so. Yeah, I pay it's, Paul Feig. It's weird. <laughs> or, or pay her in rubies, presumably. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Presumably, the, 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 the chemistry between Sam and, and Holmes is key to this, right? As you, you mentioned yeah. there with Charlie and, and Daisy, um, it doesn't work unless, the, you know, they work, essentially. No, totally. I mean, it's, you know, we had so many really good actors come in and read for the roles, but you have to embody this spirit that they have. And, and the, the two of them just really... It, it, it was it, it, Very few times have I had a project where you go, like, there's literally only two people that can play these two roles. And this was... One of them. Uh, Sam, talk about your uh, slightly more traditional route, I imagine, rather than posting Ruby videos on Twitter. Yeah, no Ruby videos. <laughs> not yet. Sucks. Not yet. Yeah. Um, no, I, yeah, I had more of a traditional approach, but it was uh, an interesting moment uh, out of the blue one day. I got a call from my ex-girlfriend, and she was like, hey, um, Hope you're well. Uh, I'm just calling because I'm auditioning for this show that you need to read for if you haven't read for it already. I was like, okay. And she sent me the sides and I watched the British series and I just, I don't know why, but something clicked and I was like, this feels very, I feel like I know this guy already. Sam is from Ohio too. And I am from Ohio. There you go. So, um, yeah, and then... Uh, I called my team and I was like, get me in the room because I knew Paul and Jenny were going to be there. And I was like, I have to prepare. And I remember we did a, a mock uh, interview before, but I, I kind of wrote something before to like lead into it just to like really shoot my shot. What did you write? Uh, uh, it was like a story about being on TV and how I'd never been on TV before, but yeah. Kelly and I were on the news. <laughs> and it was oh, a slightly yes. yeah. oh yeah I remember now yeah yeah and and during the Fast and Furious movies we get really rowdy that afterward we do donuts in the parking lot <laughs> and and despite it we hired you and despite yeah yeah, yeah. and he's like almost lost you the job <laughs> yeah. I thought I was going in for Fast and Furious so I, I was just happy to <laughs> get any job because we always do a lot of improv in uh, our in our in our um, auditions because uh -huh. we need to feed off of them as much as they're gonna you know do the words that, that we come up with and um, and they were just masterful at that and it's a great way if you're auditioning people it, it's just a good way to see them what they can bring beyond just what's written in the script and you get a lot of extra stuff out of it. I feel there's some partners or ex-partners that deserve quite a lot of credit in the, uh, the casting yes, process for, uh, for this. Yeah, I owe her a lot. Um, yeah, seriously, we like dedicate this to our exes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where yeah, would I be without yeah. I owe her half of my stuff. We're, we're divorced. Um, <laughs> no, <I'm kidding. laughs> no, but I think that Sam actually taught me a lot about acting and I was able to help him with improv oh and God. I feel like we it really balanced each other out. Like coming from those two different worlds were really, really helpful. Um, yeah. Personally, I, I felt that you helped me a lot with that. And I felt like you helped me like open up and a little bit. And I felt like you helped me. <laughs> <laughs> no, you did. <laughs> um, no, but uh, genuinely, like with the improv, like I, uh, up until this point, you know, I w I've been used to working on things where they're like, find your mark, say your line, and that's it. Yeah. And you're like, okay. But with this, it was like we got agency, and that kind of like freaked me out at first, but you really put me at ease, and... Taught me to let go. And I didn't know how to read until Sam, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it was <laughs> like a, yeah, it was a. <laughs> no, but I really didn't know how to memorize lines as well. He, it was just like, it was a perfect pair. No one else could have been my shrub. Mm. 
Holmes, how did you find it, given that you say it was a very, you know, what you were doing before was very different, to, you know, going through this process, you know, the improv, but equally just the sort of the, you know, the acting, essentially. How did you, uh, how did you find it? Me? Yeah. yeah. How did I, I go, uh, Michael? No, um, <laughs> I, I found it, uh, at first I had a bad imposter syndrome, um, but luckily I believe in therapy, uh, and... I also realized that like improv was more training than I expected. Like I thought like, oh, like my mom is like really cynical too. Like she kept being like, well, what did Sam learn in school that you didn't? And I was like, whoa, girly, I don't know. The, yeah. uh, but then I really got there and realized that doing it long form, like Chicago, we do like long form improv where we make like 30 minute pieces like every night really. Um, that really actually was like more acting lessons than I realized because I feel like the main thing with acting is being present and with improv, to be good at improv, you have to be present. Um, so. I think more it was like learning how the industry worked that was like a learning curve. I learned a lot about like, I didn't know what a forced call was, right? Just like little things about like how the days go. Um, but as far as like hopping on set, I mean, it was just, I mean, this is like a dream show. I think it would have been harder with other people, but like the first director was Paul. And it's like, Paul's like, dance, you know? You're like having a blast right away, <laughs> right? Jenny's like, all the writers are so funny. The cast is like, all these people are like improvisers too, for the most part. Like they're really so funny, so it just made it feel really comfortable. In the in the docu comedy style is is so freeing because it isn't like hit your mark and all this. You know they can kind of we didn't barely even block out scenes and we just have two cameras shooting and we hire a documentary crew to shoot it. Yeah. So they're very instinctual, knowing when to zoom in, when to yeah. pull out, and it just makes it a complete performer's dream and like yeah. I used to get in trouble when I would do improv because I would always look at my coach almost for like feedback in the audience yeah I paid for a coach to do free art okay and I would like kind of look out always and I found that having the camera was so fun because you got to have a whole relationship with her so like Kelly like loves attention so having the camera there was really nice to almost like it's like having another friend on set that you can check in with uh, talk about that the sort of the style of the show the the docu comedy you said it, there's a documentary crew as the crew is, so you use sort of doc filmmakers yeah we have a uh, yeah we, uh, little shauna who's our our dp she she was on survivor incredible you know, when, when i worked on the the office the american office back when we also we would take people from survivor basically because they just had that instinct they knew when to be in the moment so yeah. you don't have to micromanage okay zoom in now do this they're very good and all you have to do is then okay cover this on the next pass but each time you do a take you get the whole scene yeah. it is so immediate and I, I I've said this so often now but I never want to do anything but this again yeah. because it really does it allows everything to happen in the moment the comedy is more true you get so much more done yeah. the idea of waiting 20 minutes to do a lighting setup it I can't imagine doing it any other way what are the, the there's, there's other challenges presumably for for this form otherwise everyone would be doing it what what are they what 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 oh i mean the the challenge is whether audiences accept that or not but i mean you know when we started doing the the office way back when people were like oh what's happening it just felt too weird but now everybody knows that language so there's kind of no reason not to do it yeah. you know it just depends but it depends what kind of story you're telling it has to fit the story that you are you yeah. know putting across uh, talking of which michael um when this came across your desk you know jenny and paul pitching you the show you know what was it about it that, that you thought this was right for fox I, I mean we we always start with who's the voice like who who's going to tell the story and and to be in business with Jenny and Paul before we even heard the pitch we were already leaning in because we knew if it felt even remotely right for us it would be something special and then the idea of of focusing in on this small town full of flawed human characters who still kind of need each other and complement each it it was it was so funny and special and unique to anything that's on TV. They're a, a small town comedy. It, it just doesn't exist. You know, you, you, you want to try and play in other spaces that other platforms are not. And the, these, their vision for the characters and their interpretation of this country just felt so funny and, 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 uh, and, and special. We chased it. Um, with wild enthusiasm w uh, with Lionsgate and um, there was a bidding war to get it and and um, we got really lucky and got it. Um, talking of, of you ordered a pilot <laughs> and then a little thing the pandemic happens. Yes. Yeah. Heard of it? <laughs> I, I gather you, you had a little bit of footage pre-pandemic. Can you yeah. talk through well, what was going on? 
we, we, we were... We were already kind of late in the season for shooting, so we were kind of one of the last ones to start up. A lot of uh, shows had already been shutting down because of COVID. We were in North Carolina, and we had our one day of shooting halfway through the day. We just went, we got to pull the plug. Like, this is just not safe. But then Jenny says, get everybody. We're going to a park. And so we literally went to this park, and we just shot a bunch of scenes, as many as we could, to get everything on camera. So we sold this on a one-day pilot okay. shoot. We were able to cut this really great 20-minute pilot out of it. And, uh, and it was. And that is such a testament to the performers, these guys, but also our other performers who aren't here, who all rolled with it. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't, and it wasn't just the performers. It was literally, like, the prop department. Like, get the latrine! Okay. Get the, somebody get the latrine! Yeah. I mean, it was a full-on, let's put on a show. Yeah. And it was fun. But we certainly didn't expect to only have one day of shooting. Yeah. Sam, Holmes, was it fun? What was that experience like? Uh, <laughs> uh, no, it was, uh, it was a, I mean, it was a dream. But, well, I was just so excited to just start filming, you know, because we were there for like, what, like a week before, just like, yeah. kind of just grabbing dinner all the time. And, uh, <laughs> and parties, getting ready, <laughs> exactly. And, and, you know, Shrub had been building up and building up, so it was really exciting to, uh, to really just like, I felt like for the first time in my professional career, like, you know, feeling that agency as a performer and just like literally getting room to play was insane. So when I was asked to do it again, I was like, yeah, let's go for it. But I also didn't, I, I was hoping so bad that we weren't going to shut down. So like I was kind of in denial the whole time. I was like, no, 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 I think this is uh, just how it works. Yeah. yeah. I definitely didn't. I thought, like, best case scenario, we would get to, like, do the full pilot. So when, yeah. like, seven months went by and they were like, hey, you're actually filming all 14 episodes in two weeks, it really felt like, <laughs> I was like, I was like, that must be a joke. And I do remember having this really sweet moment where we just got back and we were back in, like, Kelly's house that they have in Wilmington, North Carolina. And... Uh, I was sitting on like the corner of Kelly's bed and looking at Paul and Jenny and it was like this deja vu from the year before where I was like I felt so emotional because I was like I can't believe we get to do this again after only have oh my voice cracks I'm growing um, <laughs> of like that we get to do it again because I really just didn't think it just seemed impossible so yeah it's really a dream and it is kind of amazing that we are premiering two years to the day that we shut down so that's Thank pretty well. So Thank you, not COVID. long at all. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. Only two years. <laughs> Only two. We, we did something though. I, I think uh, the collective of us did something. I think that was really smart. Once, you know, beyond the brilliance of shooting, turning a day of dailies into a presentation, was we Jenny and Paul immediately hired a room, wrote, uh, took advantage of that time, wrote. I think it was four scripts, right? Yeah. And 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 so we had this. Um, you know, incredible beginning of a season of material. And then we had this presentation, if you will, where we saw the chemistry between these these two, which you cannot, you either have it or you don't, and they have it in, in, in spades and, and got to, you know, tease a little bit of the other dynamics with the rest of the cast. So we, we were able to, to really look at this presentation and the material and then it became a no-brainer for us to to move forward with the with the series and and so I, I I do think why we had a lot of speed bumps as an industry on on welcome to flatch the creative team navigated everything with how do we move our show forward so we don't lose momentum and and it worked out did you see enough uh, you know unusual way of, of presentation I imagine presentation is almost a little bit kind to, to what you saw were you able to see enough in that chemistry to, to order 14 episodes? Yeah, absolutely, especially when you combine with the material. I, I actually think the docu-style uh, storytelling helped us in that present because it, 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 with the, the level of, of they, they know who these characters are, both behind the camera and in front of the camera, and, and I think being able to run and gun that day and pick specific moments uh, to just give a tease of, of the care, we got so much out of it, um, you know, and and so yeah, yeah, and it it's uh, I I almost wonder now like how do you replicate that kind of going forward where you have this presentation and and ability to look at a few scripts and you know maybe you don't need traditional pilots anymore, but saying, you have to have this t Michael team Clark like said this. It. Uh -huh. You yeah. don't need pilots anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but Michael, networks are tending to go more towards presentations yeah. now, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's 
it, you, you, it, comedy is, is, is so interesting because you, it's really a marriage of, uh, you know, the material and the execution and also the, the cast. You have to, it all has to come together. And, um, and in this presentation, we were able to see it. Like you, you, could, you could feel that there was something special like where that first day when we were, when we heard the pitch at Fox, you could, you could feel the potential and then in that, I think it was like 10 minutes, uh, which is still incredible for one day of shooting, by the way, it's incredible. Um, you, could, you could see it and feel it. It was, it was pretty cool. We, we, we all, everyone across Fox and the different departments really fell in love as we shared that presentation around. Uh, let's talk about your characters uh, a minute, uh, Shrub and Kelly. Um, you know, we've seen the clip. Can you talk, they're, they're unusual. A little bit, a little bit. <laughs> um, I would say Shrub, you know, I think, well, both of them, um, you know, they're both passionate, artistic, entrepreneurial, oh, there's nice. the word, well done. big word, um, <laughs> uh, spirits without, you know, much of the support to kind of make that happen, so, yeah, yeah I think what makes them peculiar is they're also, sort of, hopefully, what makes them really like They're sort of underdogs, but they, they're well-meaning, right? Yeah. Big time. Also, I feel like we relate to that. I mean, growing up, I was, like, so obnoxious, and now I love that I'm too much. Uh, and I think that, like, Kelly really, really is, like, Kelly, like, thinks she's the best. I agree. But, like, I think the rest of the world oftentimes doesn't understand it, but she's very much, like, I'm the best. I don't know why you guys don't get it. And I think that it's kind of also a small-town energy of, like, I grew up mostly in Nebraska, and yeah. I do think there's kind of this element of, like, when there isn't much to do for fun, you really create it. Uh, and I really think that Kelly and Shrub are constantly creating their own fun and experiences, and I love them. I'd be their friend. Yeah. Miss her. Can't, hope we're going to do it again. Yeah. <laughs> you've, you've got some incredible actor, other actors on the, you know, Sean William Scott, who plays, uh, plays the priest. Yeah. Um, talk about the other cast. Mandy has got some great lines in the, the first episode. Yeah. What's, uh, talk yeah. about the rest of Flatch. Well, I mean, Sean, Sean came to us because uh, we... The, one of the first calls we got when the show was going forward is like, you know, Sean William Scott is interested in playing the priest on the show. I'm like, what? Like, <laughs> it made no sense. But he wanted to have a meeting, and we were kind of like, all right, let's take a meeting. You know, we're fans, but I didn't think he was right at all because the original character is this sort of, you know, dumpy guy. And, in, and he walks all handsome and everything. But the minute he sat down and started talking about the character, we were like, I think we're doing this. Like, he just gets it. And he was so, you know, and he just, he, his mom always wanted him to be a priest. So she was very happy. So he got to make she that is, dream come true for her. She was extremely happy. Yes, exactly. And then we got Aya Cash. It's kind of at the last minute, yeah. who, you know, who is just so brilliant and had just been doing the boys and all that. And then Mandy. And then um, Crystal, who plays Big Mandy, I had worked with on one pilot before, and she popped so much for me. I mean, she's someone you can't forget. And the, the, the Big Mandy character is, is from the original show. Um, and I, as soon as I thought about her, I was like, well, that's got, I mean, she's so perfect for yeah. this role. Um, and she brings such magic and joy to the character that it's hard to look away. I mean, they all are kind of exactly the, there aren't a lot of actors that could have played these parts. Yeah. So we're very lucky. Yeah. They, yeah. Nope. Nope. I was just gonna say also, Crystal, yeah, makes me break so much. She's so funny. And then also Taylor Ortega, who plays like my enemy in the show. She <laughs> comes from the improv world too, and she's so, so talented and hilarious. Justin um, Linville. Justin Linville from uh, Chris Gethard show and all that. Yeah. Incredible. No, I mean, the, the great, if you cast a show right, you go like every one of these people could have their own spin off. Yeah, except for one. <laughs> no, we're we not going to say all. who exactly. <laughs> Just playing. We'll tell you later. <laughs> what What are the sort of pros and cons of having the British original? Because you know, you mentioned there, Mandy's in the, in that, and, and you know, there's obviously the the pro of having an idea, but equally, you don't want to be too subservient to right. it, right? No, no, totally, totally. You know, we and I, I, I was involved with the the American Office, and. That had a different challenge because the, the lead character you know, uh, that Ricky Gervais played was a very unlikable but hilarious character. And when they tried to replicate on the first se season of The Office, making Steve Carell unlikable, America hated the show. <laughs> but then it was the second season after 40-Year-Old Virgin come out and go like, oh, actually people like him, so he needs to be well-meaning. He can be an idiot and all that, but he has to still be well-meaning. This 
had a different kind of challenge because those characters are very likable, even though they're kind of you know crazy. But it was just really it did come down to casting. We just had to get two actors that had that same energy that wasn't going to compete, but was going to be their own version of it. So they could take it, and you're not just going, oh, she's just acting like Daisy, you know, and, and I think Charlie. it's a mental thing, too, of you don't want to be the one who screws up a really good show. Do you know what I mean? You don't want to be the person where they're like, oh, that one, it wasn't The Office. Um, Space. So, <laughs> yeah. 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 So I was, yeah. we really wanted to do, like, justice to what had been a fantastic show already, already but make it our own. I've heard some of your sort of comedy peers talk about the first six episodes of, of making a TV comedy are the, the hardest. You know, you almost want to be able to sort of make them scrap them and start, you know, the beginning of season two. Do you find that, you know, as, as, is it easier as it goes along or what's, the, what's, what's your view on that? I think it is. You get to know the characters more. You, you get a comfort with the actors, get a comfort with the characters so you can play off them more. Um, well, there's never been a show where they, people don't say, it gets better as it yeah. goes along. It's because you get to know the characters, you know. And you know, then when you go back and revisit the earlier ones, yeah. it's actually pretty good. Although I will say, to, I mean, I'm a little biased, uh, but I do th I'm really proud of our first um, six, well, seven that are going to be on Hulu. Um, I'm plugging the Hulu. First seven right are now. dropping, uh, March 17th. Because I think it came together faster than I've had in the past with other shows I've done. I do feel in what way? Like um, it just felt natural more quickly. It didn't feel like we were pushing as hard as um, on the comedy or on the characters as I've I've had to do in the past. But I think that comes from the docu comedy style I think too. So too, because if you're doing shooting traditionally, it's just you know we're getting your close up, getting your close up. There's not that gel that it happens. It, it, it's a set in a, an explosion when you get on a set in this docu thing because it's just like do the scene and boom and there they are. Also like. Paul directed our first three episodes. So, like, you know, in my opinion, he's, like, the best director that there can be. And so it really was, like, that probably evens it out a little bit, too. Because yeah. he just is, like, so good at having you get energy. Um, he just is so good at encouraging play. You just feel really safe to play. Yeah. And, and I feel like, I mean, Paul, you just, like, really laid the perfect groundwork for the rest of the series. Um, so... Couldn't do it without you. Thank you, Pale. And, and Sam, you've worked on more traditional comedies, right? Like, yeah. all right. What, what was, what, you know, the docu style for you? How did you find it? Oh, uh, wait. Will you, will you say that again? How so, did like, I find it? So, you've worked on like traditional, like a multicam comedy. <laughs> this is obviously a very different yes. form. I'm just curious how you found that process. Oh, I thought. I mean, it, it's night and day. I love, like, for comedy, uh, the the mock style is incredible because you're also playing off of the characters that are. The documentary crew, you know, and uh, so and like also you're filming so much that you have to let go. Whereas like with other shows in my past, you know, we're doing two scenes a day, and it's like you got to nail those two lines you have, and you know. So whereas it, with this one, it was just like yeah, like the, the amount of play and and uh, how fast we were going, it forced you to just really let go. You know, right away. It breaks you down <laughs> in the, the best way. Well, the other great thing, too, is we sh we're shooting in two small towns in North Carolina, um, Burga and what's the other one? <laughs> I'm blanking on the name. Uh, but it's, so it's basically we are living in a back lot. Like, we, wherever, we can just walk down the street and take over the whole place. So it's yeah. great. So it's literally like, oh, let's move the scene over here. We'll just run. and Yeah. It, it helps really it feel natural, it. for sure, being in the actual location. Yeah. It's so nice. How do those small towns find it? Do they, uh, do they accept they you? They are very, uh, very nice to us. They're Burka? very happy. Yeah. Oh, the people in Wilmington are genuinely having a premiere right now, today. Like, they all are the best and so supportive so and sweet. love it. And, like, Burgos are a really small town. And when you walk by on, like, the windows, they're, like, selling shirts for the yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, really yeah, yeah, yeah. They did merch us pretty quickly. They, they merched us. They, they had it. the latrine Wait a second. On Hold on, is that a and they're suing. So you get it's a bad. <laughs> yeah, it's really sweet. Um, <laughs> Kelly and Shrub would love this guy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Are we going to see the documentary crew at any point? Obviously, like in the office towards the end of the run, you see a, a little bit of interaction. Well, we we I, we highlight them more. I mean, there's one episode even where the camera falls into a hole, and you know, so, so yeah. But I mean, I don't think we want to. I don't think we'll ever turn the camera on them. No. Yeah. But they certainly play a role in, in, certainly in the relationship they have with the characters. Yeah. But no, I don't think you'll ever see them on screen. Yeah. Uh, Michael, um, they mentioned that you know you're dropping all seven episodes. Well, sorry, the first seven episodes yeah. 
on Hulu the, the day of the premiere, which you know is unusual. It's the first time yeah. you've done that. Um, talk about that decision. Why did you want to do that? You know, and, and how it pertains to the sort of comedy world right now. Yeah. Look, it's. I think there's about 500 scripted shows on television right now. I, I across all the platforms. So it's it's incredibly challenging for any platform to launch a show impactfully. And so we we, we kind of stepped back. We, we really felt like we had something really special and unique. And um, the more you watch the episodes, the more you connect to these characters, the more you fall in love with the, the tone, the comedy, uh, the human stories within it. And so we, we, we really thought about how do we set this up for success? You know, most comedies do not launch. Um, with big numbers, and so they're more of a slow growth. So we we decided to work with our partners at Hulu, and and while we're doing the first seven episodes, the first half of the season, linearly on Fox, we are also dropping on the day we premiere uh, the the first half of the season, seven episodes on Hulu. So if you want to, you know, watch it weekly on Fox, it's there. And if you want to, if you fall in love with the first episode and you just want to go and binge all seven and you know you can do that and our hope is that however you experience it you will find the characters in the show as contagious as we do and 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 then tell your friends and 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 put the word out and and really connect with what we're trying to do and then the back half of the season um will be all on fox and and our hope is you know strategically Maybe by the time that the audience connects with those first seven, they they will be on the edge of their seat to watch episode eight and come back to a more traditional viewing pattern. And we still have a partnership with Hulu, so you'll be able to find it there afterwards in other um, uh, VOD platforms. But but the second we, half of the season will run weekly, will we'll, it? Will run weekly, and and we've never done it. It's a new it's a new approach. Uh, what we have found with. Uh, Lionsgate and BBC and Jenny and Paul, are, they're, they're up for doing new things. They want the show to be seen. And, and, and so we all kind of are going to try a new, th a new uh, process and see if it works. It, and and we, we think it, you know, we hope it does, obviously. And we think for this show, it, it, it could really help break it out. And, you alluded to the fact that it's tough to launch comedies these days. What, why is that? Why do you think that is? I, I think on one hand, it's tough to... Um, to launch any show in general. Uh, but I think it's just like Paul was saying with The Office earlier, it took a, it took a season. If you think about you know, the, the all-time greats, Cheers, Seinfeld, um, new shows like Schitt's Creek, or, or like, it, it just takes time. And we, we have found through our animation series, which also take a couple years to catch on, that if that's just the pattern, don't fight it. Don't lie to yourselves that this one's going to be different. Try something. Try something new. Um, you know, when you're with one of your best shows and creators, and so that's that's why it's it's. I, I think it's just the nature of the way people are watching shows, and so what we decided was, if you do the same thing again, you're probably going to get the same results, and that's not what's in the best interest of this show, really. Yeah. yeah. But but there's a shout out to the, to our partners at Fox who have been. Unbelievable! This one and, and to come up with this idea for a network really? television is unheard of. Because I've just found it, sh people don't latch into shows until they can binge them. Uh, it just it's just a natural thing when you go watch it over and over. It's very hard to get people to watch you know 30, 30 minutes and then go wait a week and come back. It just it's so smart. So thank you, Michael, and everybody there for that. Yeah, yeah. it speaks you. to how much yeah. we love the show. I think. Yeah, talk us through the the arc of fourteen episodes. So obviously, uh, some people might have seen the the first one, but. Where do, we, where do we see Kelly and Shrub uh, across that 14? So we like to say this show is kind of like, it's, it's small stakes played for big stakes. So it's not as though there's suddenly gonna be a big change that you witness over the course of these 14 episodes. Um, they, they certainly, Shrub has a story of wanting to go to art school and that's gonna kind of drive him through the season. Right. Um, and I think also drive him in some ways away from Flatch and away from Kelly, which is very hard for Kelly to deal with. And Kelly has a very tumultuous relationship with her dad. Um, and so a lot of her drive is trying to figure out how she can get him, get any attention. 
You'll, uh, you'll also notice that like my arms get really uh, a lot bigger. <laughs> towards the end. He does bulk up. That's 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 what I would say. That was the actor's choice. So. Yeah. We went with that. But no, you'll find that there are storylines that play through. Um, but you're, it's not. These are not characters that have big growth and change, yeah. and that's what I loved about the original show. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of like the honeymooners. There's always a scheme <laughs> between them. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to everyone seeing it, and I'm sure you guys are as well. So, uh, Paul, Jenny, Holmes, Sam, Michael, thank you very much. Thank you, thank Peter. You. Thanks, Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you.